Now you may ask, what is a derivative? And the answer to that is actually quite simple, and we're going to explore what a derivative is through the rest of this video. So right now, we're going to take a look at these limit definitions of derivatives. And I have the two limit definitions of derivatives written down on that paper. And as you can see, the first one states that the limit as delta x, the limit as the change in x, delta x is the change in x. So the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. So that's our first definition of a derivative. Now our second definition, the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And f of x is some function. So what do these definitions really mean? Some of you may intuitively see it right now, but others need a more visualistic approach. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at some function and a graph to try and understand what this derivative actually means. So here we have some function f, as you can see. And we have this curve and we have these two points, x and x plus delta x. So we have x and we have x plus delta x. And the distance between them is delta x. And we have these two points on the curve, x comma f of x and x plus delta x comma f of x plus delta x. And we want to see what this actually means. What does this limit mean? What does the derivative actually mean? Because we already know that this is the definition of a derivative. Well, if you take a good look, you might figure it out at first glance. But if you haven't, I'll tell you right now. So, what would f of x plus delta x minus f of x be? Well, if you see, we have f of x plus delta x right here, right there, and we have f of x right here. So it would actually be the change in y, the change in the y axis. All right, so we, now we know that the top is actually delta y, the change in y. And if we look at the bottom of the limit, delta x, and if we look here, it's x plus delta x, minus x would give us just delta x. So delta x is the change in x. So we get delta y over delta x. So it's the change in y over the change in x. Now, you should notice this as something very familiar. What is it? It's slope. This is a slope. It's a rate of change. So what, what does this really mean? Well, it's the slope connecting the points x comma f of x and x plus delta x comma f of x plus delta x. So it's the slope of the secant line connecting these two points. So why don't we connect them and see what we get? So if we draw a line connecting these two points, something like this. We get something along the lines of that. And there is our secant line. Now, what would this limit here do? What does this limit have to do with this slope? We already know that this is a slope. So what does this do? Well, as you can see, it says as delta x approaches 0. So as the change in x approaches 0. Well, if the change in x is approaching 0, that means this x value right here is getting closer and closer and closer to that x value because delta x is getting smaller and smaller and smaller because it's approaching zero. So that means this point is also moving closer and closer and closer along this curve. So it might be here at first and then the limit would bring it here and then it would come here and then it would come here. And then as the delta x gets so close and gets near zero, we'd practically be at this point. We'd be infinitely close to this point. And what does that mean? We have a slope between two points. And our delta x is coming closer and closer and closer so that this point here gets closer to this point. Well, some of you may understand right now. 
But for those of you who do not, well, here it is. It's the slope of the tangent line to this curve at this point x, comma, f of x. For those of you who still do not see it, I'll go over again. As you can see, this point is coming closer and closer and closer because the delta x is getting closer and closer and closer to zero. And because of that, this point right here, or this x value, is moving along the x-axis towards x. And as you can see, it gets closer and closer. So let's say we have a point infinitely close, right there. And now we draw this, the line for the slope connecting these two points. Well, as you will see, you can see how this line right here is tangent to this point. So now we know what is a derivative. The derivative is essentially the slope to a tangent line of some function f of x. Okay, so that's looking at the first definition that we proposed. Now let's take a look at the second definition. If you're still confused, this might clear up any confusions you have left. So our second definition stated that the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And that's a derivative. So since we already understand that the derivative is a slope, this also is a slope. Well, when we identify these points here, what would we get? This point right here would be a comma f of a. And this point right here would be x comma f of x. Now what we're saying is that this x value is approaching a. So just like the delta x approached x in the last definition, this x is approaching a. So this point is going to move closer and closer and closer until we get infinitely close to this point. And once again, we're going to get a tangent line. So this is also another way to find the derivative or find the slope of the tangent line to a function f of x. Okay, so now that you understand what the derivative is, let's go over a problem and this should completely clear things up for you. Here is the question. So let's read it. Find the equation of the tangent line to the parabola y equals x squared at the point 1 comma 1. Alright, so what are the two things that we need in order to get the equation of a line? Well, one of them is a point on the line. We need a point on the line, which is already given because we want to find the tangent line at the point 1 comma 1. So we have our point. Now the second thing that's necessary is the slope. And what are we going to do for the slope? We're going to find the derivative. And as we already know, the derivative will give us the slope of the tangent line. So now we you know, have a way to get the slope and we have a point. Let's go ahead and calculate it. Well, here's the function and I have the tangent line already graphed just to give you an idea of what this would give us. So here's the parabola and there's the tangent line. Okay, so now that you understand what we're actually doing, let's go ahead and do it. So in order to calculate this derivative, we're going to use the limit definition proposed at the beginning. So we have the function y equals x squared, and we're going to do it at the point 1 comma 1. Now let's do it. The limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. Okay. Now plugging this in using a more specific function or y equals x squared, we would get since f of x plus delta x, f of x is x squared, so x, f of x plus delta x would be x plus delta x squared minus f of x 
over delta x. Okay, so nothing too bad. It's pretty simple, just plugging in values. Now let's go ahead and do this limit. And you could probably recognize that we did a limit some, something like this in the beginning in part one. So it, we're just going to follow the same thing we did for that. So this would be the limit. Approaches zero of expand x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared minus x squared over delta x. Well, you'd notice that this and this cancels and we would lose the squared. Delta x would cancel and we just have the limit as delta x approaches 0 of 2x plus delta x, which simply equals 2x. Okay, and now we need to plug in for what x value, and the point is given 1 comma 1, so the x value will be 1. So the slope of the tangent line to the parabola y equals x squared at 1 comma 1 is simply 2 times 1, which equals 2. That's our m. Now, we're going to use point-slope form to find the equation of this tangent line. Well, point-slope form, if you forgot, is y minus yo, which equals the slope m times x minus xo. And xo comma yo is some point on the line. And we already have the requirements, so we'll just get y minus 1, because it's 1 comma 1, equals 2 times x minus 1. And that's it. We're done. That's the equation of the uh, tangent line to the parabola y equals x squared at 1 comma 1. If you want to simplify this even more, you would get y equals 2x. Uh, this would be minus 2, and you would add 1. So minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. And we're done. So this is essentially our answer right here. If you still have trouble with this, I strongly encourage that you go back and rewatch these areas because this is a very important idea. This is one of the biggest ideas of calculus. We need to really understand what is going on with derivatives. And I've essentially given what the limit definition is and really what is a derivative. Now, for my next video, I'll be going over how to how to uh, solve these derivatives much more simply. There's a more elegant way. You don't have to always go through this very uh, tedious limit definition. So I'll be going over the ways, the rules for derivatives, as well as some applications of derivatives. So please like, favorite, comment, subscribe. Uh, and for, uh, please look forward to my next video, which will be coming out next Saturday. And I'll be going on a Saturday basis from now on. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I will respond. Um, and that's about it. Thank you.